All right, this video I'm going to talk about the finding the sum of an infinite geometric series. Uh, now, in class, I talk about this formula, which is S equals A1. We're going to have 1 minus R on the bottom. But there's a few important things with this. So first off, it is for an infinite geometric series. Well, how do you know it's infinite? Well, my first example knows how on top, that's the ending point, we have infinity. So that's how you know this is going to continue on forever, infinity. On these other style of problems, uh, we have our series here. And notice at the end, we have the dot, dot, dot at the end, meaning this pattern is going to continue on forever and ever and ever. That's how you know it's infinite. Now, there's two important things that you're going to need for this formula. You need A1, which A with a subscript 1, that means the first term. The other thing we need is R. Now, this piece is really, really important. So R is, you know, your multiplier. What are you multiplying every single time to get the next term in the geometric series? But the important thing is this. Whatever R is, we're going to take the absolute value of it. Because remember, sometimes R can be positive, sometimes it's negative. So we're going to take the absolute value, which is going to make, no matter what we get, it's going to make it positive. Now, whenever you take the absolute value of R, there's one thing we have to check to allow us to use this formula. And that is that absolute value of R has to be less than 1. The reason being, if it's less than 1, our geometric series is going to approach a number. So kind of like in my previous video where I talked about partial sums, we approach numbers. If R is less than 1, that means our sum is going to approach a number. If R is bigger than 1, then this is going to keep getting just bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not going to approach any number. So what we say is the sum does not exist. So let's look at, I'm going to go through three examples here. So this first one, I have the summation from n is 1 to infinity, meaning we're going to start with the first term, go to the infinite term. We have 8 times 1 fifth to the n minus 1. Now, you might not be able to identify it right away, but we do need to recognize this is geometric. One way you might notice that is this rule is of the same form of the rule we use, you know, the a1 r to the n minus 1. So you might be able, and using a formula sheet, recognize, oh, a1 is in place of 8, r is 1 fifth. Another way you can go about and go through doing that is figuring out, you know, what is n1, what is n2, what is n3. Find the first few terms and see, hey, is this actually a geometric series? And what you're going to find is you're going to get 8, 8 fifths, and 8 over 25. And what you could do there to find out those numbers is anytime you have a decimal in your calculator, you want to do math, fraction, and that'll change any number to a decimal. So, we have these pieces. Uh, what we need to recognize is we need to look at R. Well, in this first example, R is going to be 1 fifth. So let's take the absolute value of 1 fifth. Well, the absolute value of a positive number is still a positive number, so we get 1 fifth. Now, that 1 fifth is less than 1. So what that tells us is the sum of this infinite geometric series will exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my pieces, plug it in, and then I'm going to use a calculator to go the rest of the way to find the sum. So we're going to have S equals, and in the numerator I need A1. Well, A1, remember we looked at it earlier, it's 8. So I'm going to have an 8 up top, and on bottom, I'm going to have 1 minus R, or 1 minus 1 fifth. Now, to avoid any possible errors, I'm going to type this all in the calculator at the same time. Here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to have my 8 divided by, and I have this 1 minus 1 fifth on the bottom. I'm going to put my calculator, put parentheses around that. So I'm going to have parentheses 1 minus, so I did a subtraction time, sign, and then I'm going to do division, 1 divided by 5, parentheses. When I hit enter there, I'm going to find that this sum is going to be 10. So if I was able to write out all the terms here, you know, all of them up and added them all up, the infinite amount of terms, it's going to add up to 10. So the sum of this series is 10. All right, let's look at a few more examples here. 
So this next one, I have 1 half minus 5 thirds plus 50 over 9, so on and so forth. What you should immediately notice is we're not in summation form. So I do know that this is a 1, but I need to check and figure out what r is. How you're going to figure out r is you want to take the right term and divide by the left term. Take right divided by left, right divided by left. So in a calculator, I need to take negative 5 thirds. What I'm going to do is parentheses, negative 5 divided by 3 parentheses, and divide it by right divided by left, divide by parentheses, 1 half parentheses. Negative 5 thirds divided by 1 half. And we get negative 3.33. For these types of problems, I want r to be a fraction. So again, if I have this number and I want a fraction, hit math, frac, and I get negative 10 thirds, which again is the same as negative 3.33. And I want to check another one just to make sure my r is correct. So 50 over 9 divided by... Oops, divided by parentheses, negative 5 thirds. Right divided by left, and I get negative 3.33 again, which is negative 10 thirds. So to be able to use the formula, I gotta use A1, which I have, and I gotta use R, but we have to check R. So we're gonna take the absolute value of negative 10 over 3. And if you do that, you get 10 thirds, which was we knew was 3.33. And we want that to be less than 1. Well, 3.33 isn't less than 1. So what happens here is we actually can't do anything. And all you do is you say the sum does not exist. Now what that means is this sum, as you add up more terms following that pattern, the sum gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it never really approaches a number. It just keeps on growing, keeps on growing. So you're never going to find an actual sum there. So the sum does not exist. All right, one last one, and I'll wrap it up. So we have 3 plus 5 has 25 over 12, 125 over 72. Again, I would like to know, well, first off, a 1 is 3. R, take right divided by left. So in a calculator, I'm going to do 5 over 2 divided by 3 right divided by left. So I got 0.833333. I want the decimal there, so we're going to hit math. Then fraction, 5, 6. So our multiplier there was 5 over 6. Just to make sure I got this right and make sure it's geometric, I'm going to check and make sure R stays the same. So I'm going to check the next one. Parentheses, 25 divided by 12. Close parentheses. It's 25 over 12 divided by, parentheses, 5 divided by 2, parentheses. And I got 0.8333333 again, so 5 sixths again. So there's my R's, there's my A1. So again, we have to check, make sure the absolute value of R is less than 1. Well, the absolute value of 5 sixths is 5 sixths. So is 5 sixths less than 1? Sure is. So that works, so then we could plug into the formula. So we're going to have S equals a1 up top, which is 3. Now on bottom, 1 minus r, so 1 minus 5, 6. Um, by the way, we're going to use the r we usually had. So if we would have had a negative r there, we'd have 1 minus negative 5, 6. That would turn into 1 plus 5, 6. But 5, 6 is positive here. It's just 1 minus 5, 6. So I'm going to plug this into a calculator to make sure I get this right. So I'm going to type in the top, put the bottom in parentheses. So 3 divided by parentheses, 1 minus 5 divided by 6, parentheses. So that matches up with this. Hit enter, and you're going to find the sum is 18. Now again, the important things with this is this formula only, this formula only works when it is an infinite geometric series. So the series never ends, and it's geometric. And most importantly, that R has to be less than 1. So that was infinite geometric series.